guys, OCA here. This is part 2 of the Odyssey Hex for Epic Dolby Atmos series and in this 20 minute video I'll be showing a method to accurately calibrate the standard Odyssey microphone and then embed this calibration very precisely and I mean this into the Mult EQ app's target curves. With this technique you will achieve correction results otherwise only possible with the $200 Mult EQ X app and its separately sold $80 calibrated microphone. Let's start with the basics for those of you who have not measured their Odyssey corrections with REW before. First, you plug in the Odyssey microphone to the MIC input of your PC's motherboard. Every motherboard has this input-output jacks at the back and you have to use the MIC input. Just directly plug Odyssey's jack in here. There is also a line in, but its sensitivity might be different. Usually both of them work just as well, but I, I do use the MIC input. And then connect your PC graphics card HDMI out to one of the free HDMI in ports on your receiver. So this is how you connect your computer to your receiver amplifier. And then connect your mic or any other USB microphone that you have with a calibration file obviously to a USB port of your computer and don't forget to switch the receiver to the correct input and that's all the connections you need and these are the download locations for REW and ASIO if you prefer audio stream input output drivers to Java drivers just go with it but you don't really need the timing precision or to access the surround channels for this process we will take a total of three measurements and one for the UMIC microphone and one for Odyssey microphone in this position and one for an opposite position so that we average them and it uh, sounds like it was exactly in the same location with the UMIC microphone. You have to place them as close as possible to each other that's what I did for example for this video. The tips should be at level same height and ear height ideally and the location should be a central listening position for best results <laughs> and you take the first measurement like this Odyssey microphone to the left of Yumic microphone and then you take the second measurement by moving the Odyssey microphone to the other side of the Yumic and again as close as possible so this is for measurement two We start by running rev. It's usually going to ask you a calibration file for the USB microphone. You might they say yes, and then you have to upload the 90 degree calibration file. There are two calibration files for every UMIC microphone. You have to use the 90 degree one. That means it's pointing upwards to the ceiling, just like the Odyssey microphone. So you upload it and close this and then you go to preferences you can use either java drivers or SEO drivers ASIO As -as -as ASIO is a bit more accurate because it bypasses all the windows uh, drivers but it doesn't really make a lot of difference and then what you need to do is with java you have two devices that you can select as microphone one is the odyssey one is the umic and you have to select as output device your odyssey receiver either marans or denon so let's start with the UMIC. Everything else is standard here. Calibration files, make sure you have the calibration file here. For the Odyssey microphone, unfortunately, we have no calibration file, but we will create one. So nothing else here to mention. Everything else is standard. Once you're done in the preferences, you go to measure. And you don't need acoustic timing reference, but it's useful to align the impulse responses so you can use acoustic timing reference and output left speaker reference output right speaker and check levels if you like so level is okay try to measure it at a at a loud enough level that will eliminate all the noise in the background also try to increase the length as, as much as possible. I would prefer to do it 1 million or 2 million, 
at least, but for the sake of this video, I'm quite short. Very short measurements will be affected from all sorts of noise in your sound system, and noise and electrical current, etc. So the longer, the better, because this is important as it's going to be used for mic calibration. So let's go ahead with 512. The range should be from 0 to 24,000. And start. So this is your U mic measurement. Now let's measure with Odyssey. For that, you have to go to preferences again, sound card, and select Odyssey. Everything else the same, and then go to measure. And it's warning you that Odyssey doesn't have a calibration file, so you have to click continue anyway. And then with exactly the same settings, 0 to 24,000, acoustic timing reference, measure. Fit everything to the screen. So these are your C and you make measurements. This is Odyssey 1. And now go ahead and change the places, put Odyssey microphone to the other side of the UMIC microphone and remeasure. Call this one Odyssey 2. Now we have measured both uh, Odyssey on two sides of the UMIC microphone and we have also made a measurement with UMIC. We now have one measurement for the USB microphone calibrated, you mic two, and two measurements for our Odyssey microphone, Odyssey one and Odyssey two, at different sides of the USB mic, so that their average will supposed to be on the exactly the same location of the, as the U mic. So first thing we do is get rid of these reflections and smooth them. We go to IR windows, at frequency dependent window, and width and cycles should be 4. Apply windows to all, keep ref time is what you need to click to do it at once for all the measurements and keep their reference times. So let's see. Now we can see better the difference between two different locations of the Odyssey mic. And the next thing we should do now before we do any calculations and averages, we have to time align them. For that you have to use IR, uh, align IR start command in but just to make sure it works correctly because it may sometimes not get it right you go to overlays window select impulse tab normally when you open overlays window what you see will be something like this you have to magnify it by using this plus button here until you see the impulse peaks of all three measurements properly as you see, this is UMIC 1, this is time 0, then this is Odyssey first measurement, this is Odyssey second measurement. If you measure the distance between the first and second Odyssey measurements, you will see that there's like 0 0.7 centimeter difference. So I, I was pretty close to the UMIC microphone at all times. And the impulse response peaks seem to be quite aligned to each other. Still, we have to do that. It's quite hard to show both screens at full HD resolution, which I need to dumb down my screen for YouTube recording. 
So, on the rear of this VL screen, when everything is ticked, you go to controls and align IR start. Click, and as you see, it moved all of them moved to time zero at the impulse response starts, and they are now time aligned. You can click a couple of more times to just make sure, and if they're not moving, they are time aligned. That's it, close the overlays window. Now it's time also time aligned. Now we need to create one measurement from these two Odyssey measurements, which will be an Odyssey microphone measurement, which if it were in exactly the same place as the UMic microphone. So for that, we untick UMic 2 and only one and two Odyssey are on the screen. Go to controls and RMS root mean square average. Done. No, we no longer need Odyssey 1 and Odyssey 2. Now RMS average is our new actual Odyssey measurement. Odyssey mic. And this is the U mic. Now they are obviously far away from each other around by 16.6 uh, .6 dB. We have to align their volumes, SPLs, uh, sound pressure levels in other terms. And to do that you again go to controls and align SPL command use average SPL of measurements and you can uh, even align them for like 75 dB but doesn't really make any difference for the calibration we'll create so use average SPL of measurements this part is not more important you have to choose an alignment center and then you, you have to choose an alignment span and the highest is five spans five octaves down and five octaves up that uh, if you choose 200 as mid that kind of covers from 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz so we will align them in this area from 20 hertz till 20,000 hertz which is what we need for the curve edit, edit, editing in the Odyssey app because that's the, the, that's its limit so we press ok and they are now time aligned now every difference you see is the calibration that the standard Odyssey microphone needs it's actually not as bad, but it will vary from microphone to microphone. Like around here, let's magnify this so we'll see the differences more clearly. For example, here at 45 hertz, which is quite low base, the decibel difference is less than one decibel. It's 0 0.7 decibel difference. Here is even less. Here, something similar, 0 0.7. There is some large difference of one and a half dB uh, at 2000 Hertz but the major difference is starting in the high frequencies as you see and I see the effect of this in my Odyssey automated measurements all the time it dims down the reference dims high frequencies quite excessively mostly and it's because of the microphone perhaps but we will compensate for everything so now we have the both measurements and we need to create a calibration file for our Odyssey microphone which is the orange one actually for ease of let's make this one blue okay so how do we do how do we create the calibration file we go to controls trace arithmetic so we were we're now going to do some impulse division we divide you make two by Odyssey mic this is the division a divided by b a is you make two and b is Odyssey microphone regularization should be zero don't tick the lower limit and upper limit actually in the old versions of rev you won't even have these options so generate and when you focus everything on the screen this is zero there's something you need to do you need to lower the volume of the average calculator the division calculation by three decibels for some mathematical reasons don't worry about it just lower it down 3 dB And now, as you can see, the deviation of this graph from axis zero is exactly the calibration that we need. For example, here, Odyssey microphone measures higher than normal, so it gives Odyssey microphone here a dip, so that it measures correctly. And here, Odyssey microphone, as you see, is below the U mic here, so it needs to be increased in volume, whatever Odyssey measures. So it gives a boost here. And as you see in the low frequencies, it increasingly gives more boost. And by 20 hertz, which is here, let's make this screen 20 to 20. As you see, the full difference from the calibrated microphone is reflected in this 
nearly flat curve very little differences here sorry I'm this is the zero axis so we had a perfect calibration file now how do we import this into odyssey measurement how do we edit odyssey curves with this actually in part one of the of this series i explained how to do that but let's do one more time when this is actually let's call this calibration now let's export this calibration file export export measurement as text do not use range of measurement which will be the default use custom range 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz and use resolution of measurement that will have like 60,000 data points but just um, you can decrease this by using custom resolution as much as you want like if you use 3 PPO total data points will be something like 20 it, it will jump 5 hertz for each step and if you choose 60 for example but it's jumping 2 hertz per step but if you use resolution of measurement it is less than half hertz per step so this will be around 50, 65 thousand data points but just to abuse odyssey mult eq app let's go ahead with resolution of measurement smoothing of measurement could uh, stay as default and everything else is default press ok and let's name this calibration save now we go and open this text file calibration text double click notepad will automatically open it first get rid of anything that's not number uh, as you see it has three columns it, uh, the third column is phase information which we don't need first column is the frequency here then the SPL that uh, needs to be applied to our Odyssey microphone uh, in decibels and ignore the phase value so edit select all you can see that it's a very long list ending just below 20,000 and starting just about 20 Hertz so edit select all copy now we have to go to Excel it's just about the one cent cell formula or the secure editor it's nothing special it's just a formula we paste it somewhere like here these are my previous studies you can delete them so it comes as one column you have to data text to columns it delimit it next and click tick space instead of tap and finish so it will be three different columns now you can delete completely the rightmost column so now we have the frequency and the SPL information let's see how many data points 54,559 we will upload all of this to Odyssey curve copy paste it here and this is the formula that you have to apply first the data has to start with a bracket square bracket and then this is the formula you have to type and it's quite easy and you can pause the video when you're applying this yourself and just copy this here there is a space after the comma that's important and nothing else and once you enter this formula to cell b2 you just double click on the corner and copy it all the way down one other thing you have to be careful about is that another square bracket ending it and this is another column as you see and just delete the last comma from the formula so it shows the Java as an editor that uh, the data ends here. That's not, uh, That's it. All you have to do now is copy all of this, Control C, and we are done with Excel as well. Done with Notepad too. Then we go to our web browser and to the search line, just write JSON Online Editor. The first hit is what we need json editor online this is a very very useful website i have a odyssey exported measurement from before which i will use 
and it is unedited. Look, I have so many here with lots of different studies, but uh, the original one, which I hadn't touched, was I think. Okay, I can find it. Nice. Ah, here. This one is original. So you just pick and drop it here, and it just opens up the JavaScript completely. Look, detected, cha detected channels 12. This is 11 plus 1, 11.1 surround system that I've been using. Channel 0 is front left, FL, as you see here. Channel 1 is center, C. Channel 2 is front right, FR. So you can do edits here on the actual Odyssey measurement. You can export this very easily to your PC. Uh, Odyssey app uh, allows you to send the measurement to cloud or save it on, on, on your iPhone or even send it over WhatsApp. And then you can receive it on your PC through WhatsApp app. That's what I'm doing, but there are many other ways. And you just export it back, same way. So now, how do we, as you see the custom target curve points, zero items for each channel. But we have like 60,000 items to load here. So what you do, you come on one of them, right click the mouse, select paste, and it will give you this message explaining that you can't do it with mouse. So you click close and then press Ctrl plus V as in copy paste. As you see, 54,559 items is just inserted here as data curve, uh, target custom curve points. Look, they are all here, all the way. It's a lot of data for the app to handle, but it's, it does it pretty well. And you, then this is done for the front left channel. The curve is customized. Now for center channel, right click, paste, close, control it. And for front right, again, right click, paste, close, control it. So it's very fast, as you see. You have to do this for all the channels because it's a microphone calibration. But I'm not going to do that for, the, for to keep the video short enough. Now we can save it to disk or cloud we want to send this edited measurement to back to the iPhone or your iPad here the normal extension is JSON for JavaScript online but you have to change it to ABY for Odyssey and let's name this calibrated MIC Cal curve and save. Now all you have to do is send it back to your phone, and then your phone will automatically, the, I mean, the Multi EQ app will automatically grab it if it's saved saved under downloads in your phone. I have this explained in detail in part one of this series, as I said before. And once you do that, you will have. Let me show you. Once you upload the edited measurement to your multi q app on your iPhone or iPad or tablet, then when you open this measurement in the curve editor, you will see this curve instead of the standard this curve. This is Odyssey's normal curve, and this is your mid calibrated target curve. It's compensating for all the problems in the microphone. So when you send your measurement to your receiver with this curve, the receiver will receive the correct room response of your room. So the correction, the end result, will be significantly better. And you will not even need calibrate the Odyssey microphone. So that's all for today, folks. Thanks for watching and bye.